Hello everybody. Um, so I've not long got back from work. Um, it's been a while since I've done one of these videos for a couple of reasons. Um, firstly, uh, due to circumstances that are beyond my control. Um, I haven't really bought all that many records recently. Um, and secondly, uh, I haven't seen that many bargains recently anyway. Um, and so it's kind of been a bit of a moot point. Um, but, however, on Sunday, so only two days ago, um, Posty was mega quick on this one. Um, I saw an auction on eBay that I just couldn't resist. Uh, I will tell you what I paid for all of these um, at the end. Um, but on the face of it, I think it's been a bit of a bargain. So um, I've got a box down here, very, very heavy, um, quite a number of albums. Firstly, I'm going to get into it um, and... Of course, there is a bit of swarf there that nobody cares about. So I might pause the old video and then show you um, the records that I am excited about. Um, so uh, let's just set the old camera up and we'll get into it. See what I mean? This is a big box of records and it's damn heavy. Um, just right uh, from the outset, um, it's cost nearly 17 quid to post these, and I only paid £9.50 for postage. So hopefully, that means that not, not only have I got a bargain, but I've got a mega bargain. Let's keep our fingers crossed. And let's hope it doesn't take too long to get into this thing. Sometimes they're like Fort Knox. So I think there's maybe 20 or 25 records here, of which I would say 13 or 14 uh, of particular interest. So as you can see, right off the bat, we do have some charity shop, charity shop rubbish, such as Buddy Holly Greatest Hits. Oh, there you go. Spoiler alert. Right. I'll just pause the video and I can sort the wheat from the chaff. Okay, so I'm going to show you approximately a third of these records. The rest of them aren't actually just complete rubbish, but I'm going to show you the, the best ones. So here we have a UK mono copy of Out of Our Heads by The Stones. Um, it's the non flip back sleeve variation um, I think there's a little misprint on the sleeve here yeah I think it says uh, do you see that sorry if you can't yeah do you see that it says um, 965 rather than 1965 there as the spine. So I've recently sold a really decent copy of this, and I mean really decent copy of this, for more than I paid for all of these records. So, well, I think we've 
possibly got the original inner sleeve. So does that bode well? Let's find out. Okay. So we've got matrix ARL 6973-12B on side A. Um, and that's looking like a pretty, pretty decent copy of quite a collectible record. Side A looks very nice, in fact. Side B, we have 6974-11A, if that means anything to you. And once again, that is a really pretty decent copy. There's not a whole lot of spindle wear there. Labels are nice and clean. And I wouldn't say that that looks like it's seen a whole lot of action. Forgive me, I don't know a whole lot about that record. So if you do see anything on the label that's unusual or of interest, then please let me know in the comments. OK, so we're off to a pretty decent start there. Um, on to a George Harrison record. Living in the Material World. I think this is a gatefold sleeve. Yes, it is. So the sleeve looks nice. I think there was originally maybe some artwork with these, but I'm not completely sure. Okay. That looks pretty good to me. Not a whole lot of wear and actually reasonably clean as well. So I believe that's probably a UK original press. I'm not going to spend forever on it. Let's see if there's any artwork in here. No. Okay. So that looks pretty nice. We have a nice pair. Ooh, Matron. By Pink Floyd. Um, which consists of the Piper at the Gates of Dawn and a saucer full of secrets. I think I've showed you one of these on the channel recently. I think this is a revised sleeve because I think there was a picture of a dentist there that had to get removed for legal reasons. Let me know in the comments. So it's got a nice gatefold sleeve. And it's got... Original inner sleeves. There we go. Let's take a quick look at the records. Oh, they look nice as well. That's record two. That doesn't look like it's seen a lot of action. Side A, that's a pretty good copy actually. Side B, very nice. Even without the rarer sleeve variation, that's got to be worth a couple of quid, surely. Okay, we're doing well so far. Here we have a slightly lacklustre Stones album, so I'm not going to dwell on it, but it does have the original inner sleeve. I think there's... Oh, yes, look. Yeah, there's a misprint here in that there's no track timing for the track Luxury. I think there's some discrepancies with... Um, the track length 
on the sleeve and on the label as well. I can't bother to uh, look too closely at that for now. That's a nice copy of an resolutely okay Stones record. This is an exciting one. And also one that I really don't know a whole lot about. So please, if you spot anything interesting, then let me know in the comments. Here we have the wall. I haven't had a hell of a lot of copies of these. There is side A. That's nice, isn't it? And there is side B. That looks like it should play very nicely indeed. Barely looks like it's ever been played, actually. Um, I'm aware that some of you might be able to tell me something about the sleeve. But I'm not completely sure what. I think the sleeve got changed. I think there was some sort of... There was something with the credits um, that got revised quite shortly after release. So I'm not sure if it's an early sleeve variation or not. There we go. There is side C. That really is nice. That is a beautiful copy. And side D there. Again, I honestly don't think that's ever seen all that much action. So, yes, that's a real win. Lovely. Um, getting towards the bottom of the pile now. So we have here another mediocre Stones album that I'm going to have a quick look at. Side B, once again, not seen a much action. And there is side A. So that's a nice copy. Is there any artwork with this? I don't think there is. Nope. Okay. Uh, getting towards what I know a lot of you come to this channel for. So we have a UK mono copy of A Hard Day's Night. The sleeve is a little bit stained. And the record needs a clean. There is side B. And there is side A. Still not too shabby though. That's a nice enough copy of A Hard Day's Night. I think with a clean, that is a pretty decent disc. Certainly no deep impact damage there to be too sad about. And that should play quite nicely. Shame that it hasn't got an original inner sleeve. And it's also a shame that the sleeve has got some coffee stains there. Might be able to lift some of that off somehow. Um, right, I've got, just so you know, I've got three more left, including this one. So we've got one of these horrible um, plastic sleeves on this copy of Beatles for Sale. Um, although saying that, it has probably saved the integrity of the hinge there because they often go but this one looks okay side a similar to a hard day's night looks pretty good actually needs a clean and there is side b not one of the more collectible mono Beatles records, but still 
still a nice item to have. That's easily worth 15 quid, I would say. I'm going to have to peel this horrid gatefold sleeve off. Okay, bringing us to a couple of unknown qualities. We have a copy of Sergeant Pepper. I'm not going to get terribly excited about this because I think it's probably a 70s repress. Uh, don't know if there's any artwork. Let's have a look. Oh, look! There is some artwork. That slightly lighter green hue on the insert tells us that it's probably a 70s copy. As does this inner sleeve which I think is probably original so we've got a two box two EMI box parlophone copy from the 70s once again looking pretty pretty tidy there is side A and there is side B it's never going to be as collectible as a yellow and black label copy from the 1960s. But that said, in that condition, certainly with the insert and what I believe to be the original inner sleeve, that's worth 20, 22, 25 quid all day, every day. Brilliant. Very nice too. And lastly, it's probably the one I was most excited about. No stranger to the channel. We've got a UK mono copy of Please Please Me. The sleeve looks great from the front with reasonably sharp corners there. Let's take a look at the spine. Spine is good. And that is the back of the sleeve. So far so good with this. Hopefully a nice copy. Oh look. It's got a press clipping as well. That's interesting. Have a little read of that. Later on. I wonder when that's from. Um, from. 1991. Adds a little bit of interest. We've got the original inner sleeve, albeit a bit split. So lastly for this video, let's take a look at the condition of this record. Hmm, we've got a bit of a scratch there, which lets it down a bit. Hopefully that should play because the rest of it looks decent enough. XEX421 dash 1N on side A. Nice heavyweight disc. I think it's a fourth pressing. And there is side B. We've got 422-1N on side B. And again, playing surface wise, looks pretty nice. Not a whole lot of wear on that label. And really, if that plays through that scratch, that is a little bit of a naughty one. Um, then that's probably worth half of what I paid for the lot of them. So, in conclusion... Wow, that's been a long video. Um, yeah. So, uh, by the way, I paid... I got changed from 75 quid for that lot. Pretty good. Um, so, yeah. That's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. That has been something of an opus. Um, so, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, but for now, that's it from me. Um, I will see you again soon. Um, and, yeah, that's it. Cheers, everyone. Bye.